New addition, the MTC is almost ready to house new missionaries. See the newest plans. Stranded hiker, one man's hike turned into a rescue operation in Weber County. And building barriers, American Fork is using concrete to handle panhandlers. I'm John Hansen. And I'm Lucy Tingy. It's Wednesday, May 15th, and in Utah, it's 12 o'clock. From KBYU and the BYU Department of Communications, this is the award-winning 11 News at Noon. An organization that encourages women to involve themselves in politics is calling Utah's very own Mia Love a woman to watch. Running Start is a nonprofit group honoring women who take on leadership positions. Um, the Utah County Sheriff's Office has been taking care of more than 70 malnourished horses. Mother and son duo Judy and Tr Trudy and Rory Childs face charges of animal cruelty. A judge ruled that three, these horses can go up for sale to let the county recoup some of the cost of bringing them back to health. The court order says the child had to make, take a chance to make a payment and keep the horses, but didn't do so. The LDS Church is carrying out its plan to use two apartment complexes in Provo as temporary facilities for the Missionaries Training Center this summer. Rain Tree Apartments and Wyview Park are on the west side of the Provo MTC and will function as the MTC West Temporary Facility. The church spokeswoman Ruth Todd says the two complexes will become housing for nearly 2,000 missionaries. The church will use two-thirds of the apartments in Rain Tree as classrooms. The plans are now in front of the city planner for approval. Authorities in Weber County rescued a man who says he got stuck on the mountainside while hiking. 11 News reporter Megan Graham is live in the newsroom, having spent yesterday in North Ogden Canyon. Megan, how did it happen? Well, with the snow melting and the warm weather moving in, people are eager to start hiking. Kelly Rogers said he went out Sunday afternoon to enjoy the sunshine and ended up out there much longer than he expected. Authorities continue to investigate how 43-year-old hiker Kelly Rogers spent three days stranded on a cliff over North Ogden Canyon Road. Other hikers heard him screaming for help yesterday morning. He says he'd been stuck since Sunday afternoon when he fell. It was that ankle injury. So he said he, he injured his ankle and just was disoriented. Even though he's that close, he was just dis disoriented, so he wasn't able to, to get out. Search and rescue teams used a double rope anchor system to lift a stretcher up to Rogers and then lower him back down the cliff to safety. Authorities say his story has changed a couple of times and it's unclear exactly what happened. Rescuers say lack of food and water can combine with the heat to make him confused. Uh, you know, with being disoriented, uh, he could have some, some issues really understanding exactly what took place up there or remembering. Uh, we just don't know that exactly. Rescuers took Rogers to McKady Hospital where they say he will make a full recovery. Investigators say they plan on filling in the blanks of his story once he recuperates. They say the big questions now are how long he was out there and why no one reported him missing. The sheriff's office says if there's a lesson to be learned, it's to be prepared. Whether you're going on a long or short hike, make sure you have plenty of food and water and let someone know where you're going and when you might be back. You never know what might happen. Live in the newsroom, Megan Graham, 11 News. Sage advice. Thanks, Megan. How far can the government go in recording private conversations? This is the question facing the 4th District Judge in the case against former Provo Municipal Councilman Steve Turley. His attorney claims prosecutors recorded a private conversation between Turley and his lawyers and want charges to be dismissed. The judge denied the request and Turley is facing 10 counts of second-degree felonies. Orem City will allocate nearly $2 million to the arts and recreation organizations. The money comes from what they call the CARE tax. Roughly half goes to the Sarah Center and Hale Center Foundations. City Councilwoman Mary Street says the two organizations help enrich the recreational lives of Orem locals and expose children to the arts. 
Police say a man who was texting while driving hit three Midvale girls who were crossing the street. The girls were on their way to go swimming at the time. All three survived but have serious injuries. Police say the driver claims he never saw the children in the street. Two girls have already left the hospital and doctors say they may release the other girl later today. American Fork is making a concrete attempt to discourage panhandling on their streets. As 11 News reporter Grace Thomas shows us, there are some new barriers in the way. Yeah, the intersection at 900 West and State Street in American Fork is a hot spot for panhandlers. City administrators say they got lots of complaints about the growing number of aggrettlers, so they're doing something about it. Last year, the city tried to reduce panhandling by enforcing an ordinance restricting the act of begging for money. One panhandler sued American Fork, claiming that violated his First Amendment rights. So officials came up with a new solution, creating a physical barrier. We met with uh, a lot of the retail owners uh, in the stores in the Meadows area and uh, staff, and, uh, and then we talked about what we could do in the medians. The city got several leftover concrete blocks from the I-15 project and placed them in the median, making it nearly impossible for anyone to stand there. Whitehead says he is more concerned about the safety of those panhandling than the public annoyance. The reasons specifically for the barriers were to uh, ensure pedestrian safety, uh, and uh, but it came about from complaints about people being in the medians. Even though safety is a concern, some business owners and shoppers say they are tired of feeling obligated to hand out money. I'm not a very rich person. I'm a poor college student. I don't really have anything to give. And if I give, I want to make sure it's going to the right place. The city released a memo called A Guide to Handling Panhandlers, which encourages people to donate to charities instead. Now, I tried to interview people who use the corner for panhandling, but I couldn't find anyone. So I guess that means the, barrier, the barriers must be doing exactly what the city leaders hoped they would. John? An organization that encourages women to involve themselves in politics is calling Utah's very own Mia Love a woman to watch. Running Start is a nonprofit group honoring women who take on leadership positions. They gave Mia Love the Woman to Watch Award last night. The Republican Congresswoman says it is a privilege to participate in the event. When 11 News at Noons returns. Rodeo Superstars Payson City honors four world champions that hail from their community. And toddler trapped. A crash into this house has a two-year-old California boy headed for the... A Native American tribe in eastern Utah is fighting the state government over criminal jurisdiction within its reservation. The state of Utah says they oversee criminal prosecutions inside the tribe's Uinta and Urake reservations. The tribe argues in a new federal lawsuit that Utah sale of lands and establishment of towns inside the reservation doesn't give the state authority over them. Four world champions are bringing the Payson community together. As 11 News reporter Lauren Butterfield tells us, the city is honoring them in bronze. Any community would be proud to have one world famous cowboy represent their town. But what about four? Wesley Silcox is a world champion bull rider. Casey Field is a world champion bareback rider. Casey's dad, Lewis Field, in the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame, and they call Troy Lowell the wild child. This clown is a six time comedy act of the year winner. They all call Payson their home. I grew up in Payson, lived here my whole life out in West Mountain. And uh, my, I grew up riding bulls. My dad rode bulls, my brother rode bulls, so kind of just had to do it. Payson is honoring these four cowboys and the accomplishments they continue to make in the rodeo world. A new statue is being unveiled in honor of these cowboys who are at the heart of this community. Friends and family members came for autographs and watched the cowboys proudly remove a sheet from the new statue. The community's uh, always supported us and it's been a good, you know, very good thing. I'm glad to see them taking advantage of, of us in this way, you know, so pretty humbling. This sculpture will remain in the Hall of Fame section at the Petite Neat Museum for people from all around the world to come and see. They've just done great things to promote uh, Payson, and we thought it was time to honor them. In Payson, Lauren Butterfield, 11 News. These four men say they plan to continue competing in rodeos, performing co comedy acts, and riding on the way to winning more titles. The National Transportation Safety Board is asking states to lower the blood alcohol limit for drivers down from 0.08 to 0.05. 
They say drunk driving is not an accident, it is a crime. And although it may take decades to implement, they hope these stricter regulations will help reach a goal of zero deaths from drunk driving. The Attorney General investigates the IRS. A Philadelphia abortion doctor avoids the death penalty, and a toddler survives an unexpected scare. Here's your look at news from across the nation. The IRS investigation is underway, and U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder is the one behind it. Members of the Tea Party and other conservative, conservative groups say the IRS targeted them when they applied for tax-exempt status. The IRS has already admitted to the targeting. Investigators are now trying to figure out whether or not it qualifies as actual criminal activity. The Philadelphia abortion doctor convicted of killing three small babies will not get the death penalty. Kermit Gosnell made a deal with prosecutors. He agreed to two terms of life with no option to appeal the verdict. On, on Monday, a jury convicted Gosnell on three accounts of first-degree murder for killing babies that were still alive after he performed an abortion. And a two-year-old boy is recovering from being pinned by a car that crashed into his California home. Police say the driver lost control of the vehicle and ran into the living room where the toddler was sleeping. The driver and passenger fled the scene, but a neighbor pulled the boy out from under the car. EMTs brought him to the hospital with minor injuries. And that's your look at news from across the nation. John? And Caleb, I went running this morning and I could just, I was just so happy. It was so beautiful. I mean, are we going to have this weather for a little bit longer? Hopefully, John. Things have been really clear, like you said, and uh, there have been a few clouds in the sky. Stay tuned to find out if those clouds will turn into rain later on this week when your 11 weather returns. Hopefully you've had a chance to enjoy the beautiful weather we've had this morning. Just take a look. Uh, great chance to go take a run or just enjoy the weather with a stroll before you head off to work. Uh, right now in Provo, things are warming up. It's about 66 degrees with uh, winds varying and uh, keeping things a little bit on the cooler side. But things will continue to warm up throughout the day. Uh, throughout the state today, we should be getting up into the 80s. Uh, with a lot of sun, a couple of clouds in the sky, but there is a chance of thunderstorms around the state. That should uh, not deter you from going out, but just be aware. Uh, the highs around the state today are going to be uh, very warm, much warmer than what we've been seeing, but still comfortable. We'll have uh, in Logan 82, Salt Lake 83, uh, getting up to 93 in St. George, so that's a little warmer than what uh, we might like to see, but still very pleasant. Cedar City 77, that should be a good place to go cool off in near the southern part of the state. Uh, that's because we've been having a lot of sun. You can see here on the satellite map, the green represents clouds and the yellow represents rain. So Utah has had some clouds, but not a lot of rain the past couple of days. Uh, that's why things continue to warm up, uh, continue to stay pleasant out there. Uh, in the southern part of the state throughout the week, Today and tomorrow we should be in the 90s with sun. Friday we'll have some clouds start to move in and that will make things cool off a little bit, getting into, down into the upper 80s. Uh, and uh, by the weekend things should be clearing out, 85 on Saturday and 84 on Sunday. So it's a good weekend to go out and enjoy the parks down there in southern Utah. Northern Utah will be a little bit of a different story this weekend as we already have clouds keeping things in the lower 80s. By Friday, we might get some thunderstorms in the northern part of the state, bringing the, uh, the highs down into the 70s. And by Saturday and Sunday, things will be getting down into the 60s. Uh, rain on Saturday. So northern Utah is probably not the best place to go uh, in, <laughs> enjoy the weekend. Now, we're coming up on hurricane season. That officially uh -oh. starts on June 1st. Ooh. Took a look at some of the, the uh, hurricane names for this year. I think the Pacific got the better names. Oh, I tell us um, I think my personal favorite is Zelda, but we also got some good ones like <laughs> Delilah and Cosme. Wow, getting really creative there, huh? <laughs> wow, thanks, Caleb. Uh, Jake, how are we looking in sports? We're looking pretty good. I'm just glad, honestly, that sports doesn't have names like Zelda and Delilah, uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Next on sports, though, we, uh, in, the, in the clutch, the annual Desert at First duel came down to one baseball game. Find out which team came, on, came out on top 
and no place like home. The Spurs and the Pacers hosted playoff games last night. Find out if either of those teams were able to come out with the win. Sports is next. Stay tuned. In the history of the annual Deseret First duel between BYU and Utah, there has never been a tie. BYU Athletics entered the week down three points to Utah. Luckily for them, last night's baseball game against the Utes worth three points. The Utes visiting Provo, BYU with a 233-109 and two all-time record against their rivals from the north. And after going up 4-2, to two, the Utes allowed two runs in the sixth inning, including this walk with the bases juiced. Kelton Caldwell able to come in to score, and all of a sudden we're tied. Moving on to the bottom of the eighth, bases loaded for the Cougars with Hayden Nielsen up to bat, and look at the hustle by Nielsen, beating the double play, and Caldwell again able to cross the home plate for the go-ahead run. BYU fans on their feet for the ninth inning. The Cougars were in trouble, though, loading the bases for T.J. Bennett, but with two outs to go, Bennett gets caught looking here. And the Cougars are able to complete the comeback and beat the Utes 5-4. to four. And the BYU lacrosse team is heading to the MCLA Tournament semifinals after beating Oregon yesterday 17-14. The Cougars will take on Colorado State on Thursday to determine who goes to the national championship. CSU already beat BYU last month 16-5. And the NBA playoffs are so tight, a team has yet to be eliminated from the conference semifinals. Warriors Spurs tied at two games apiece. Steph Curry averaging 26 points per game in the series on the drive here. This is why Greg Popovich teaches fundam fundamentals. The great defense leads to transition offense and a fast break dunk by Kawhi Leonard again. Tough defense here leads to a Warriors turnover. Tony Parker this time with the hustle play and with four Warriors around him, he finds Danny Green who finishes with the flush. Spurs taking control. Some pick and roll action now. Parker one off, one of the best at working the two-man offense here. The jumper uh, here, a uh, deep jumper here. Parker then finds Duncan, who kicks the ball out to Ginobili for the deep dagger. Curry and Clay Thompson combined for just 13 points in this game as the Spurs take control of the series, winning 109 to 91. To the Eastern Conference semifinals now, Carmelo Anthony and company down a game needing a win. Paul George trying to make sure that doesn't happen as he drains this tough jumper over Eamon Shumpert with the shot clock winding down. Pacers led by 14 at the half. Carmelo Anthony trying to keep his team in the game, knocks down this off-balance baseline jumper, makes it look easy, cutting the lead to 11, but the Pacers kept extending that lead in the third. George Hill at the buzzer from deep. Everything just going right for the Pacers. And even Tyler Hansborough got into the action as he takes the inside dish and puts in a tough scoop shot underneath. Indiana now 5-0 at home in the postseason after they easily take down the Knicks 82-65. to The top high school basketball prospect in the country, Andrew Wiggins, committed to Kansas uh, a few days ago. The 6'7 player is arguably the best player out of high school since LeBron James. Now speaking of uh, college basketball, Kyle Collinsworth is, is home from his oh, mission. Yeah. He'll look to contribute right. in the next season for BYU. Now, where did he go to his, on his mission? He served in Russia. Okay. okay. Thanks Jake. Yep. Still to come on 11 News at Noon. This is Space singer, this astronaut may have made the first extraterrestrial music video. We'll One Canadian astronaut is making his mark in cyberspace with his skyrocketing YouTube hits. People say they'll remember Chris Hadfield as the singing astronaut. He sang a version of David Bowie's hit Space Oddity while orbiting the Earth. YouTube watchers love him, school kids love him, and even David Bowie himself gave Hadfield props on Twitter. Hadfield ended his tour through space Monday night when he landed in Kazakhstan. That's 11 News at Noon for Wednesday, May 15th.
You can join us anytime on our website, 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for watching and have a great afternoon. Man, what would it be?